Hola, buenos dias guys, John here con our favorite fucking adventurer, world adventurer here, Tim's back and uh, every time he comes into town we have breakfast on the beach with the dogs and everything and then uh, have the, some of the cute waitresses here that we can just only imagine what we want to do. <laughs> but anyways, we got some stories to share. I went to go meet him uh, one night at the clubs and it was quick, but he has some stories he wants to share. And we're gonna elaborate on the stories because it's, it's right along the same lines or the same lies that the stories these girls tell. And it's so damn hard to like, not believe it because they're so such good actresses so let's talk about how long you've been here what you've been up to it's only been like a week since the last time you've been here like about two weeks I okay two weeks since you've been here i took off a couple months i had some stuff going on so uh, i made a quick trip back i'm just here for a four-day trip which is i found out that's a right deal for me the first time i came in town uh, uh thought i was busy so i just went to uh, one of the clubs or not the big club but one of the secondary clubs uh -huh. and i was over there with a beautiful young lady brand new, I've never seen her before, and she's on her phone, uh -huh. and she was playing on her phone, she looked like she was uh, almost not unattainable, but she didn't want to be approached, and so I thought, well, she might be shy, or she might be a B-I-T-C-H, so make a long story short, I went over there, I said, do you want a cerveza, and she kind of gave me a hesitated yes, and she sat down, and uh, after the first beer, I said, I'm getting out of here, she's not, uh, she's really aloof and everything, but it did get better, in fact, we spent all the hours and hours with her. And uh, she was beautiful, and, and uh, we had our deal, and I contacted Casanova 65, and John, I said, hey, I think I found my new regular. She said, I was innocent. She told me uh, I was a, she'd been there for two days, but she, she was turned off by all the men groping her and everything that she hadn't been, she had not been a Reba since she got there. Uh -huh. And so, uh, and this is the first time in her business. So, you know, I fell, I fell for it all. And she was naturally beauty, and so, uh, it was easy deal, so I told John, I says, man, I got to, I got to be a real deal. And so he happened to come in later on, and then, uh, what do you think, John? Well, girl was super cute. I was like, oh, he sent me some pictures of her. I'm like, okay. But then when I saw her in person, I'm like, oh, wow, the pictures don't do it justice. And she was cute, natural. Uh, I think she was 21. She said 22 or 3. 22, 20, between 21 and 23, but she has this baby face, which makes her look like super young, like innocent, sweet. And uh, she's an accountant back home. We won't say where, but she's an accountant and uh, she needs to pay some bills. She's got a kid, so you know how that goes. And then she said that uh, uh, she just had to go, go real quick to make that money and get back. And she said it was her first time. and. She's been there, she said she was there three, four days, but uh, never went up with anyone, which, you know, usually the lie they say is, oh, I've been here three days and they'll show you their fucking boarding pass just to try and prove you. Always try to like prove to you that they just started or they're just there getting started and I've just been here three days, look at my boarding pass. And I said, uh-huh, okay, how many times before that have you been here, which is the common lie, which every time we talk to the waiters that have been there that tell us the truth, uh, oh, nah, this bitch been here a while, you know, and then they start, they, they automatically laugh because they know it's true when I say, okay, how many times before here have you been here, and then they say that, but what he said to her was that, oh, it's my first time, it's, and he said it was, uh, she said that was, he was her first customer that she's going up, so what was the sign that gave it away that, this actually wasn't her first time, no matter, like, it's so believable, it's so hard to resist and, like, doubt them, right? Like, you want to believe it because it sounds so true, it sounds so sincere, it's like, and they have such a cute, innocent face, you're like, oh, this girl would never lie, like, she's not capable of lying. So, give us the signs that show that it probably most likely was not her first time or you weren't her first guy. Well, like John said, the thing about it is you want to believe it. Right, right. you I mean, want to believe it. That's exactly right. These girls are beautiful. And I was telling Casanova, she, she was in a, I'm near the Kansas City area. If she was in the Kansas, the Kansas City, dressed in black, she would be the best looking girl in a big nightclub. That's the way yep. she looks here. So it's easy to, to uh, go there. So we went upstairs and, and uh, the, the man told her what room. 
and then of course she knew exactly where the room whatever it was. And then what really gave it away on the way back, they give uh, uh, they give the girls a ticket, and so she knew the way to get a ticket. And there's nothing. She came here to make money, and I want her to make money. But the fact is, you take everything you say with a grain of salt. And I was telling John, uh, he came in and started talking to her a little bit, and I said. You know, I'm kind of getting feelings for this guy. It really helped me because I thought she was, I mean, she is beautiful. Supposedly, we're going to go out tonight and we'll take her to the casino and all that good stuff, blah, blah, blah. But I just got to keep my mind, uh, it's been like a year since I broke my heart. So, you, guys, you got to keep your guard on. But still, you have a great time. They're here to entertain. And, uh, you know, come down here and have a great time. But if you put your heart out there, chances are you're going to get hurt. The fantasy, it's hard to distinguish between the fantasy and what's real. And like what he said, you want to, you want to believe it. You want to believe it's real. You want to believe this girl won't lie to you. You want to believe everything she says to you because it's just in our trusting nature. But observing them has proven that we cannot trust them. Even the girls that I deal with, they don't work. They're young. They're not bar girls or anything. And they all lie. And it's like every girl that I've been with, they all lie, whether they're like innocent, sweet, non-working girl, whatever, they're all fucking, and whatever part of the world they're all, they're at, eventually they all lie, you know? Like, I think that's their nature. Yeah. They can't help it. No. Uh, Baby Munchies, she told me like, I said, why do you guys always lie? I said, you, you're lying all the time. And she said, I know, I know. And I said, right now, why are you lying about this? And she's all, I'm trying my best, but I just can't help it. And she's all, at least, and then she said, at least I'm not lying as much as I used to. We <laughs> got that going for her. That just pointed it out to me like, no matter what, it's their first instinct to lie. And even though they're actively trying not to do it, it just comes out as like a knee jerk reaction, as a reflex to lie. And who knows, maybe it's from all the years of abuse from back in the caveman days and when the the, the vikings and the, the wars would come and invade their town and they would just have to lie to protect themselves and yeah it just it just is in their instinct now to keep doing it so you know he's uh the girl's super nice i liked her she was fun and uh she smoked a, a weed pen and i didn't bring mine and i said oh is that weed she's like yeah you want some i said yes please and i took a big ass hit and then the guy, the security of the club's all, uh-uh, can't do that. And so I had to step out and go do it. That was fast, too. They were right on me. Oh, shit. It's super fast. He was like, he was right behind me, like, so was like waiting for that shit. Yeah. Yeah. And so I went out and took a hit and then came back and I gave back to the girl. I said, you're so sweet and kind. And she's like, oh, I said, you just saved my life. And she was like so happy and like. I said, thanks for sharing that with me because I know like a lot of girls won't want it. Most girls will share, but a lot of girls won't, let alone let you take it out, out of their sight, not knowing if you're gonna come back or not. Yeah, they, exactly. And so she let me and she was super nice to do that. But let's talk about the second thing about this girl, how uh, she was sweet and innocent, but she didn't like drinking the beers. So well, let's, <laughs> let's talk about what happened and how her budget just got fucking just well, went out the door. <laughs> if you guys know me, uh, I've always had a history of falling in love easily. And more importantly, I, I leave with my wall. I always have. And John said, don't be doing that stuff. Don't be doing that stuff. Let me interrupt you right now. He used to leave with his wallet a lot worse than he, he did now. And yeah. I've watched him improve. He no longer, he still likes to spend and he'll spoil them, but no longer in the wrong way where he would overpay the girls. Like if the girl asks for 150, he'll give her 300 or some shit like that. Yeah. He's no longer, have you seen an improvement in your leading with your wallet? I probably have on that. Okay, every, good, good. When, and whenever I go to the clubs and, and it's late, I have a tendency to high energy and there's so much, they treat you so good, I'm yeah. gonna spend two or three hundred dollars on drinks, which, uh -huh. but, uh, and, and this lady, she particularly, she says, oh, I don't like so face, I've mixed my stomach up, so, uh -huh. so I said, what do you like? And she said, tequila, which, uh, uh -huh. you know, I'll drink tequila later on the night, and so it's no problem, it's ten, nine dollars for me, but it's thirty dollars for her, yep. and, uh, uh, did you Don think, Julio. Do, you, do you think she nursed him or broke him fast? Okay, so I said, shit. When I said, <laughs> I said, damn. She, uh, she like, I said, what are you going to do? Take a shot? And she's all, oh, no, no, no. I'm going to, I'll drink a little bit at a time. And that just so like we can hang out and enjoy. So she would mix a little bit of uh, uh, sparkling water, I think it was. Yeah, she, was mixing, yeah. she was mixing some uh, soda water with the tequila to like, Dilute it a little bit, she'll take a sip and then mix a little bit of soda water. 
But still, even though she was nursing it, it might as well have been a goddamn shot. Because uh, she was finishing them. I'd say maybe in like three minutes she finished. Yeah, I would say five minutes max. Yeah. You know? And then uh, he wasn't even ordering. She would just be like, <laughs> she wanted to win. She was so proud and she's all, I can finish a bottle of tequila, no problem. I can walk out of here and I can party and stuff. And she's all, look, at the end of the night, she's all, look, I'm still normal. Look how many we drank and look, I'm still normal. I'm like, bitch, you know, like he spent, just when I was sitting there, he must have pulled out like 300 bucks. Yeah. 300 bucks, change, 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 change. change. All for tequila drinks. I was like, God damn. And he kept offering me, and I'm like, no, I'm okay, man. And, like, and this was after we were up. I mean, I was done for the night. Yeah. So I said that $300 just for entertainment. Right. And like, that's the thing. What he mentioned earlier, the, the, the vibe, the energy, everything, how they have it set up, it gets you carried away. Like, you can have like a $200 budget that you want to spend. The place has a way of making you just like want to go overboard. Like, you just don't give a fuck. Yeah. You just, like, you feel like you're rich, you feel like you're balling, you feel like you're at the top of the world and you could just blow away everything. And even if you didn't have any money extra to spend, you'll figure a way to get more yeah. money to spend. Yeah, it, it gives you a, a high of the powerful the young people and, uh -huh. and the energy that you, I can't see anywhere else. Not, right. I've been doing this long enough anymore. I bring a budget, uh, lots of times, you know, if I, if I go to club, I'll put six hundred dollar meals in my bill pool, uh -huh. and then have a twenty dollars for a tab fare. Uh -huh. And then when the six hundred dollars are gone, I know I have to leave. And this lady, uh, she says, "Oh, I want you. You're my boyfriend." Blah blah blah. Uh -huh. I don't want to go. With, this is like she had to work one more hour, uh -huh. and she didn't want. So I don't want to sit with anybody else. Uh -huh. I says, "Well, of course not." I said, "Well, I'm out of money," and she she didn't argue me to stick around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so uh bringing that point up like while we were talking in the club and he's like ain't nobody else around here buying these $30 fucking oh, exactly. uh, shots. Like, yes. everyone is there she was complaining about it too she said yeah I hate this place you know like as soon as you buy a beer the guys want to kiss you and they put their hands all over you and like like grope you and stuff she's like I can't stand it and they don't even want to bang they just want to buy the beer and then like kind of abuse you at the table and get as much as they can and then leave you you know yeah, like, yeah. kind of like a, a quick satisfaction or seal them up which most girls don't have a problem maybe, maybe they do have a problem but they just they don't, don't say, say anything. Yeah. they just a lot of the girls been around long enough know uh -huh. it's part of the process right and that, that a lot of the girls got experience are smart enough to get them to spend 150 bucks upstairs uh-huh but this girl uh but uh yeah, it was good, but it was good. I won't, no, thank God I got John, or I'd be freaking drawing with my beer too much now about falling in love with another bar girl. So uh, I got John on my side. It would be Bar Girl Adventure Heartbreak Romance Part 2. <laughs> part 1 was actually the reason him and I came together yeah. because if it wasn't for Part 1, we wouldn't be having these adventures. We wouldn't be having these awesome stories to yeah. be telling and sharing with you guys. and. I wouldn't really be really going to the bar because, <laughs> because of him he gets me to go out there and I don't really go out there and even when I go there go there I'm not really with a girl I'm not there for a girl and the girls always question like why don't you have a girl I'm like, yeah, I'm okay and then baby Sri Lanka even came at the end of the night to pick me up and baby Sri Lanka said where are you it's late already why are you out because she knows normally I'm not out especially at night and I said oh I'm just in downtown and I said I'll send the uber for you to pick me up and then we go home together and she's like, okay. And then on the way, she's all, hey, you're not in downtown. <laughs> Are you at the clubs? Because the, the Uber said, oh, we're going to the clubs. And she's all, huh? And she's all, no, downtown. And he's all, and then she messaged me, are you at the club? What are you doing at the club? I said, oh, because I'm here. The One of the viewers is here. And I came to meet and say hi. And she's all, are you with the girl? I said, no, I'm not with any girls. Don't worry about it. And then as soon as I got in the car, she said, come here come here and i said why she's all i want to smell you and then she smelled me all over and made sure that i wasn't like smelling like a girl and then she said oh my god you reek like alcohol you've been drinking a lot i said well yeah i drank but at least i didn't go with any girls i didn't have any girls and she's all okay like even these girls are like getting uh jealous or um fucking protective over it you know like wanting to make sure that you're not doing anything and for me, 
Like I tell the guys this all the time when I'm there. They're like, aren't you going to bang a girl? I said, you know what? Like, even if I wanted to, I feel guilty. And they always ask me guilty for what? They're not your girlfriends or whatever. I thought they're not jealous like that. I said, well, it's not about feeling like that. It's about like, if I'm going to waste that money here, that could go a long way for me to help my girls to like do stuff, which, you know, they don't ask for money. They're not asking, they're not demanding anything. And it's like, that's what makes me feel bad. It makes me feel guilty. Like, shit, if I'm going to spend 130, 150, whatever the girl asks for, 120, even if it's 100 bucks, it doesn't even matter. It's like, that's 100 bucks or 120, 150 that I could have just given to them and they would be so much more appreciative and like so much more happier. Like, uh, Sri Lanka, I gave her, uh, she's all, I want to get my nails done and Bebesita's sister does nails. And so uh, she said she, she it would help her too. Like, baby, she said, baby, can I get my nails done? I said, okay, sure. So I gave her some money to get her nails done. I gave her a weed vape cartridge that she, they all love that. And then I gave her some Victoria's Secrets underwear. She was so happy and so, like the smile on her face was authentic. It was genuine. She gave me a big hug. She said, oh, thank you, baby. Thank you so much. And it's like, all that stuff I gave her was still much less than what I would have spent on going up with one bar girl and just the appreciation. Him and I were talking about that at breakfast. Like, man, you can give these bitches 150 bucks at the bar for banging them. You don't even get a thank you. You don't even see one smile of appreciation, maybe not even a hug. And most of the time they're going to say, that's it. No tip. They're even like, I'll ask you for more tip. And it's like, man, the, the, the appreciation and like, that's why I can never go back to doing that kind of stuff. And he's all, well, maybe one day I told him, I said, my girls, I might lose them. I'm losing them one by one. He's all, well, you can join me in Casanova. <laughs> I said, I hope I'll never have to. I hope I'm going to have to start hunting. But I said, it's very difficult to hunt and to find girls this genuine, this real, this uncorrupted, like to fall in love with you and like you that much. And like, at the same time, I don't want to dedicate a lot of that time to doing that because I want to focus on my business first. And he's all, well, focus on the money and uh, the girls will come. And I said, but the difficult part is it's the girls you don't want to come that come when they know you have money. And I said, what I want to duplicate is this genuine, the genuine connection, the genuine affection, the love, everything they feel and the appreciation of them not asking or demanding anything. Hola, what's up guys? Had to interrupt the video to bring you guys an important announcement. A lot of you guys watching, I've been receiving tons of messages from guys that are virgins, that haven't been laid yet, that want to get laid, and maybe guys that have already been laid, but they're not getting access to girls where they're at, so they want to get laid still. You know, these guys are getting taken advantage of, reaching out to escort strippers or whatever they're reaching out to, wasting all that money. If you really need help that bad and you want to do it that bad, reach out, I'll help you guys. We'll discuss whatever it is that you're facing. It can also be other stuff. Maybe you're heartbroken and need advice or need something to help you get over that heartbreak. Maybe you have a wife or a girlfriend where you feel like she's cheating on you or things just aren't the same. I can help you analyze the situation and get over it i've gone through a lot of relationships already with girls from all over the place all over the world different places you know so i've seen all the things that they do been in long-term relationships so i know what a marriage feels like i know what divorce feels like i haven't been divorced but in a long-term relationship to where i felt like divorce pretty much and so i've seen a lot of people go through it and i can help you guys that are going through these type of things too if you need help maybe like going to another place i can put you in touch with people in different places in part of my network or find people that are viewers as well that can help that's why i'm doing this to get the word across of the things that i can help you with not just that if you own a business and you're accepting credit cards and you're still paying the fees you don't got to pay the fees no more you're pretty much just throwing your money in the trash you're better off just using it on yourself splurging taking a vacation enjoying like this in a pool in a tropical location somewhere where there's nothing but palm trees around and tropical birds that kind of stuff where the weather's perfect you could be doing that instead or if you know have some friends or family that own businesses that are still wasting their money paying the fees you now i'll be able to help so i can help with a number of things and i'll be glad to you know put you guys in the right direction same thing if you guys got want to go to costa rica i got friends out there cancun i got friends down there philippines i got a lot of friends out there so if you guys need help on any of that stuff reach out I'll be glad to put you in contact so that way you can have a better experience all around. All right, talk to you guys soon. Adios. Hey, that's the girl. Oh, no. I thought that's the girl that we met that would take her, um, remember, she would take her top off and everything for us in the club. That... Well, I don't know if it is, I'm like, sure. It looked like her. 
Okay, well, it looks like one of if it is her, we're gonna fucking call her over. Uh, but she is super fun. Her personality is awesome. She looked innocent. Yeah. So, so, all right. Well, cool. So, uh, any other adventures you want? Yes, I want to bring a plug. Uh -huh. hey guys, anybody that interested in wanting to learn more and participate, John's got a good men's group. Last night he had a group meeting. He's got one. Uh, one man down in the, on the boots in the ground in Medellin uh -huh. giving reports. Uh -huh. And he's got another two men at Honko Beach with feet on the ground giving uh -huh. information. Uh, so uh, John's always looking for more. And we, we had two or three new members. John had two or three new members last night. They're interesting guys. They're all in the same uh, in their interest and in the uh, cross section of people. If, uh, if John, if join John, I want more men in the group. We don't, we don't just want more men, we want more quality men. Like the, the relationships that have been formed in this group has been amazing. We were talking about that at breakfast too. Like two of the guys in the group never met each other, never met each other in person. And like they went and met each other in Costa Rica and are now staying together for a month. I was telling you, imagine that. Not knowing a guy and then meeting him in another country and all of a sudden you're living with them for a month. How would you do that? I'm like, fuck, I wouldn't be able to do that. But thanks to the group and thanks to me vetting them out and like making sure that they're the kind of person that would be a good match for this group they automatically trusted my judgment of character and when they man when we were on the video call they look like best fucking friends dude like when you saw them on the video call hey, John, this is the fourth day and let's just wait 30 days and see what happens yeah <laughs> yeah well it's four days but they're having a blast no they are yeah they are having a blast i guarantee in 30 days they're gonna want to stay some they, more. I, I want to go down there and join them, but yeah. I just didn't make it work. Yeah, we might have to. I'm, they're like begging. They're like, hey, man, when are we gonna have a trip? This yeah. is because the last trip where all of us got together, so like most of the people on the Zoom call have already, we met each other because we had the Jedi Master meet up here and I, I introduced them all. We had an amazing time. And then now uh, some of them made plans to go out and party. And uh, when we got on the Zoom call, it was good to see everyone's like happy seeing each other. Hey, what's up? It's like, okay. like the camaraderie is just amazing. The, the, the connections and the closeness that we've been able to, to put together. And like they're all, hey, dude, we got to do it. Because like John, Huckle John was in Medellin and he's showing us the girls. And uh, a prostitute walked up in the middle of the video, was like soliciting him. And we're, I, I was like, hey, put her on speaker so we could like talk to her. Sure. But then she left, and then at the end of the call, she came back, and then she was down to do an interview. So we did an interview, and uh, the guys were like, "John, we gotta do a trip. We gotta do a group trip." I'm like, "All right, guys, I'll put something together. We'll fucking make it happen." Because it's one of the most. I don't normally hang out with guys. I don't normally go out with guys. But when it's an exceptional group of guys that are all doing well in life, and we're all trying to like uh, better ourselves, and we all have the same like interests in life, then that's what I don't mind like coming together because we all kind of share a similar outlook on life and we all enjoy the same things and so I don't mind that and everyone has the resources to go and do stuff so it's not like they're broke guys or cheap guys or, or, or stingy they're all givers they're not takers and that's they're all winners and not losers and that's kind of like what I want to bring into the group and have these type of adventures and I almost like that it's this this uh, it's not that big of a group and they were close knit Yes. Like I'm kind of worried when the group gets super big and it's like uh, out of control to where we won't know who's who and like people are chatting in the group but we won't know yeah, who's who's who. Too. Right now it's still manageable. Everyone is getting super close and like building these relationships and connections so that Lila, come here. So when we do go somewhere, it's still like manageable and uh, very, you know, everyone can still small enough, big enough to where it's big, small enough to where we still can like know who each one is and get to know each, each other and hang out. And I think like, yeah, I, I was thinking we might do a trip to Medellin because of what Hako John's doing out there. But I think the most appropriate one is going to be where it all started in the tropical paradise on the beach. Even though it's going to cost more for, for the girls and shit, there's just so much more to do outside of banging and the the tropical weather and the the atmosphere and the vibe is just it's better. It's and like it's easier to get to. It is. More yeah. For us, we got to take multiple flights to get to Colombia, and I got to stop in Bogota and then go to Colombia. And then, uh, you know, like for me, I could just go Mexico City and straight. And so, yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much it uh, for our adventures. He has a couple more days left. So we'll see what other adventures we could get into. Tonight, he's got his little date with the girl. She's, uh, she's so nice that she said, oh, I, I said, 
my guy's here for a little bit and uh, I was talking to her um, on Instagram because we added each other and uh, I said oh you ever come down to the beach she's all what beach I said oh the beach over here she's all no I just stay in the hotel and I said why do you she's all, I don't go out I just stay in the hotel or maybe to eat that's it and I said why don't you go out she's all I don't know the place and everyone's crazy and I don't all, all the guys around here are crazy and I said well now you know me and then she said yeah and I said now you know another crazy guy and she started laughing and she said okay I'll let you know if I come down to the beach I said I'll be your tour guide and I said my friend's here uh, for a couple more days you should go out with him and he'll take out take you out she's all yeah she's all actually I'm gonna uh, go into work early on Friday so I can go out with him and uh, go out on a date with him and like at least he doesn't have to spend the the fucking thirty dollars fucking Dude, you can spend thirty dollars and have three shots already on any know. other place. Yeah. Uh, she is uh, she is really special, but no matter what John says. Uh -huh. <laughs> and like I, I I I would go and meet with them and bring one of my girls, but I told myself after one experience I had when Casanova brought a working girl and I brought Kylie with me. You don't mix a working girl with a non-working girl because you'll end up leaving with two working girls. <laughs> and like all the working girls do is talk about how amazing the job is and don't tell them about the shitty part of it and trying to sell them on like they should be doing that. They should be like taking advantage of the guy while they possibly can. Like I heard her, I heard the uh, working girl trying to coach Kylie like, who is this guy? You should be juicing him for as much money as you can. Don't do anything for free. Uh, you should come work at the bar. You're so pretty, you know, like you get so a lot of guys. speak Spanish and he understands what's going on. Yeah. And they don't think I understand. And they may think that just because I'm on the interview, I was interviewing Casanova, I'm, I've got one ear on this side listening to Casanova. <laughs> the other ear is listening to that fucking <laughs> bitch tell Kylie, corrupt Kylie. Kylie's like feeling uncomfortable, like, you know, and listening. I'm like, hey, I heard what that girl was saying. Don't follow that advice. Like, you don't want to end up there. She's like, no, I don't want to live like that. I see what she's doing. I don't like that life. And she's like, I know what she's saying, but I don't want to do that. I'm like, good, because once you start, you're going to be like the girls that I describe on my channel, like the corrupt ones. And yes. I won't like you as much, and we may not hang out as much because of that. But. Well, and a lot of girls can't handle the stress. And it affects their life in a negative way, a lot of terms of growth and stuff. Some girls can handle it, some girls can't. Right. And uh, one more point that we'd like to bring up is like, uh, his girl um, went and started at the bar when it was super busy and she hated it. She said there was too many girls, a lot of guys, and a lot of guys weren't wanting to bang, they just wanted to do the drink. And the drink, touch, touch and feel and try to kiss and uh, just buy a beer or even just do a dollar thing and you know, whatever they possibly can. I'm not that guy, but I guess a lot of guys think it's a dollar budget or they don't have eight or ten girls they do this stuff with. Yeah. That's not me. I didn't yeah. think about that, but she did bring that point. Right, and that's a lot of, that's what I like to call the budget bangers or the broke guys that have come down. They'll stop to see a street girl for $30 on the way out. Yeah, on the way out. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll uh, grope and feel up as many as the, of the hot girls that they possibly can with their little tight budget. Yeah. And then on the way out, they'll try and get the little $30 uh, even maybe just the one position, just a pants off type transaction. Where it's yeah. the cheapest. And, uh, I was gonna say, don't be that guy, but you do whatever you do. You do well, yeah, yeah. That, that, this channel isn't for that. that Lila, come here, Lila. That's why I like, uh, there's channels that are specifically geared for that. Uh, this isn't is, that channel. Yeah, this is more for guys that are, that have the resources that are, are doing well in life, that are experienced and uh, not on a strict budget to where you have to resort to that kind of, uh, what do we call it? Behavior. Uh, Desperate, <laughs> sick behavior, you know? Uh, your girls talk about it. They're talking about you and we're sharing what they're saying about you. And I know a lot of you guys that are in this position don't give a shit what the girls uh, will say about you because you're, you're in that position for a reason and you're not thinking that there's a problem that you need to fix and that's the first problem right there. And without you realizing that it is a problem, you're not gonna try and think of a solution to get out of it. Maybe you do wanna get out of it and you don't know how, but you're just too lazy and you don't have the motivation and the discipline to follow through with it. And then you won't end up like me or him enjoying the best that life has to offer. And so, you know, that's okay. If that's where, you, if you're content at that position in life, by all means, but it's not, there's a lot more that you could be enjoying with a better, a better budget. Pretty much. That's the freedom. This area is designed for so much more. Work hard and you have like, the most amazing experience you can. Right. So you do you, but if you don't work hard about anything, it's, it's an amazing lifestyle. 
in short, in short doses, it did live it, but come work once in a while and break time. Yeah, uh, and there, there's a saying that's so simple that will break it down. No money, no honey. <laughs> All right, well, no money, no honey. And the, the, the less uh, money you have, the less honey that these girls are going to give you. So it's so true. <laughs> But yeah, it's a free market down here, that's for sure. There's nothing free down here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a market. Yeah, it's just a market, a meat market. You know, I appreciate the outreach, the comments, and the emails. And if you can, share these videos with a friend. Or also, at the very least, uh, just give it a like. It doesn't cost anything or take more than a half a second for you to click the like. Because then what it does when you click like, YouTube will suggest the videos to other people that have the same interests as you. So that's kind of like how the whole algorithm works. And so that, that goes and helps a lot too, you know? Like, if you're not writing comments or sending donations or whatever, pressing like and writing a comment helps greatly as well, you know? Because then YouTube will know that you find it useful and that it'll start suggesting, it'll know that it's a legit video that can help somebody and it'll start suggesting it to other people that are kind of like watching the same things that you're watching. So, well, that's it for now, guys. I think that's all we have to share. And then uh, maybe if uh, his adventures, well, we have more stuff to share. We might get together before he leaves and uh, continue the, the story. So we're back. We forgot to mention something. She did, She the girl was at least honest. Tell us what she was honest about. Well, because I did ask her if she had an OBO back home. Uh -huh. And she, she admitted it. She said that it's good. Uh, but she just needed to make some money for a car and help her you know, sister for tuition. Uh -huh. So I, like John says, they all have OBOs. But yep. she was honest enough to, to be respectful enough to, to say that. She said, this right. is just, and she told me, she says, uh, you're here for fun, I'm here for work. Yeah. So it's all work for her, which is, you know, she's, she's really honest. And I, I did appreciate that. Yeah, I, I thought that was when, when she said that line, uh, you're here for fun and I'm here for work. That just laid it all out, guys. It is. They ain't there to make friends. They ain't there to find a boyfriend or a husband. No, they're, they're there to make money. So if you think anything else outside of that, you're get you're setting yourself up for uh, heartbreak and you know to be used by these girls because they if they're receiving free money from guys that they don't have to put anything else in exchange for it, who's gonna say no? It'll even be hard for you to say no. If a girl was wanting to give you money and you didn't have to do shit for it, you gonna turn it down or are you gonna take it? Yeah, I'm take it. And like, she was honest because most girls, when you ask them if they have a boyfriend, they all lie. Oh, yeah. They all, they all try, try to make you feel like you're going to be the boyfriend or you're the boyfriend. But, you know, she was honest and she did say she needed to help her family and help her sister with tuition. And, uh, Tim did help with the tuition. <laughs> <laughs> I did my part, guys. Yeah. And, uh, I did the civil service. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, talk about tonight. So, like, tonight you're planning to take her out. What are you planning to, like, give her? Or did she make arrangements with you ahead of time? Or No, it, it was all my deal. And, uh, uh -huh. and one thing I learned, I've been this hobby long enough. You make plans, but sometimes they don't show up. You know, if it goes according to plans, it's, I'm not saying it's minority, but you're not, I will be not shocked if she doesn't even play there. Right. right. Because, uh, the, you know, the plans change, and so you don't want to take offense for it. One thing about it, because there's so much opportunity here for having fun, it won't bother me. But then, no, I, I told her to take her casino, give her, give her a little money for uh, uh, gambling, and, and take her to a nice restaurant, give her a couple hundred bucks. Nice. So it would still be less than spending on the thirty dollar. And little bar drinks and stuff too. Yeah. You know, yeah. But uh, it won't be that three four hundred dollars tequila stuff. No. At least if you go out and spend three four hundred dollars at a club or a bar, then you could buy a bottle and get her drunk as fuck. Well, yeah. It's, and hopefully she can have a good experience. It's just she says she's never been to a casino before. Well, she doesn't. She's been there one time, lost a lot of money. So. Uh, we, we, I say I have no plans whatsoever. I might text John at eight o'clock so that I'm here in the club. Uh, I mean that could happen. Right. Uh, uh, he he brought up another good point, guys. Like he has reality. Uh, he doesn't have his hopes all the way up because these girls will flake. And what we've seen is that a lot of them will make plans with you, and in in the heat of the moment at the club because you know they want to make you feel like you're special and they're gonna like really go out with you and just to juice you for more drinks or to juice you for more tips and to make you feel so good that oh this girl's really into me she's willing to go out with outside with me outside of work and in the club and like do all the things like a girlfriend on a date you know and so uh it's common it's it's common for them to flake and not answer you the day of and it's it be more surprised Yes. If, if, if they do show up, up yes. uh, don't be surprised if they don't show up. That's yes. kind of like what you got to uh, like prepare yourself for. And like he said, he might be texting me later on, like an hour after the, the time that they were supposed to meet and say, hey, she flaked. 
I'm going down to the club. <laughs> I'll be there. Let me know if you want to come down. And if I'm not with any of the girls at the place, sometimes it works out where the girls are coming over a little later and I go meet them for like two hours and I have them pick me up on the way or if we meet up at my house. But it works out to where we do, we're able to meet each other. Just like what happened uh, when I met him uh, the other night, uh, Kylie just left and then Sri Lanka messaged me saying she wants to come sleep over. And uh, I was at the club, so I was able to see him for a little bit, and she came and picked me up. And so it works out like that. And, you know, it, I kind of don't like them picking me up there because it kind of gives them the idea, like, that's okay to go to these places. And they might think that just because I'm there that, oh, it, it's good for them to go start going. They might get tempted to start working there, which a lot of them, that's all they see, you know, around here. They all know about it. Their friends talk about it, and they look up to the girls that work there because the girls that work there only show off the good side of it. The girls don't show off the shitty part where, they're dealing with shitty clients. They're sitting there bored out of their minds when they don't have clients and they got to be there eight, nine hours a day for six days a week. You know, they're not showing that part off, but they are showing off the part where they have the trips. They are showing off the part where they go shopping or the sugar daddies are buying them shit and that all is appealing to them and they want that, you know, and it's only a matter of time and hopefully they have a strong enough mind to resist, but the weak-minded ones or the desperate ones, they will give in and they will end up there and you guys will be able to uh, get a taste of some of the girls that I've been enjoying. <laughs> the one thing y'all speed on, I've been around a long time, but I understand female nature as a general rule. They have good intentions, but they're always looking for a bigger, better deal. A younger, better looking guy. A guy spends more money. Yep. Or she, she and her good friend might make $800 a day, and they say, let's go to the club. And her and her girlfriend might go to the club. And so they, they have a tendency to change their minds, but that's okay. But if you get all wrapped up in another person's uh, actions, that's when you get set up for heartbreak. Yeah, he doesn't want to go on trips with the girls just because he knows he'll get attached and he's trying to prevent it. But I said, shit, sometimes you have these super cool girls. You better take advantage of that. But the deeper he falls in it and the harder it is for him to let go when it's time to let go. Yes. You know, so. Yeah. In the, I know it was a long way, but Don asked me about one of my other favorites that are other males. Yep. yep. And I, and Casanova and I met the three sisters when they were all innocent, innocent. Yep, and yep. so this is like a year relationship. And the last time we went down there, the, the lady that I had had two phones. Yeah. And the first time she had one phone, she uh -huh. was never on it. Yep. This time she had two phones and she's checking one all the time. And so obviously she's looking at new avenues and she got the, and I still, we still had a great time. The guy, you know, I don't care if you got a Western woman or a young, beautiful woman. It, that just kind of happens in life. He even asked me when he went down there, he's all, hey, I think I'm losing my girl. I think she's corrupt, been corrupted. I said, why? He's all, she has two phones now. I was like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, what do you think the two phones are for? And he's all, yeah, well, one for the client and one for the fucking friends. Yeah. And yeah. now she's like on it. And the phones, of course, are iPhones. You know how expensive iPhones oh, they are? are. Yes, They're exactly. so fucking expensive here. The, and like, you got to pay cash here. There's not like payment payment plans and shit, so... When you see these girls with an iPhone, usually if it's not the newest one, they're buying them used because they're so expensive because of the import tax and everything. That's what makes it more than what we pay in America. And in America, we get like payment plans and shit. We're here, they don't really have... Uh, sometimes they do, but you gotta have good credit. And most of these girls don't even have a credit card or a bank account. So they ain't getting approved for that, so they gotta buy a used iPhone or get someone to buy them a used one. So look out for those signs, guys. The girl got a nice iPhone. That's a sign because... Someone got that iPhone for her, or she got it with the the sweat of her pussy. <laughs> she used a lot of her fucking pussy to get that phone. So uh, these are just some some clues for you to pay attention to and look out for to know how corrupted or how uh, uh, deep they are in the game. Um, when I added his girl on Instagram, I said, "Ah, oh, shit, she's been everywhere. She's been to Cancun, Acapulco. She's been on a yacht." I was like, "Unless she was with a sugar that was doing all this shit." She's been in the game a while, and like he said, we can't tell because when she went up to the room, she knew exactly where to go. She knew exactly where, what the the process was, and she forget they forget the lies that they're saying, and then they're just they expose themselves. Well, a lot of guys, unless they're seasoned like you and I, uh -huh. they don't even look for the signs anyway. Yeah, they, they believe what they want to yeah. believe, and not look for something that mm -hmm. sails up that they may be the sleep. Mm -hmm. So if you've been around this game long enough and heard it enough, you'll you'll know the deal. That's why I was telling you guys that. Uh, look out for the signs and we're pointing them out to you for those of you that aren't as experienced or maybe not as observant then now you can uh, start to look for these things so 
All right. Well, that's it for now, guys. Thought we'd just add this other part here. I got a bunch of clients like messaging me, so I got to get to work and we're going to take a walk and uh, get our day started. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon. Adios, guys. Adios. Adios. What have you guys, it's finally here. I got the Jedi group open and I got a website put together for all you guys that can reach out to me instead of sending me an email. The website's 420john69.com and pretty much everything you need is listed out on the links above and the links ab links below. So if you're interested in a Jedi group, if you're interested in uh, getting help with a trip, relationship advice, credit card service, real estate, affiliate programs, pretty much anything that I'm talking about, business, investments, it's all on the website, so that way you guys can help me help you a lot faster. That way I don't miss out on any of the emails, and it'll help me stay in touch with you guys, even if something happens to the channel or the Instagram or whatever, if everything gets taken down or blocked by the platforms, I'll still have a way to get in touch with you guys. So go ahead and go to the website and pick whichever link that you need help on and fill out the information, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Look forward to seeing you there. All right, talk to you guys soon. Adios, pura vida. All right, guys, so... I'm putting together these groups, the my Jedi Master Inner Circle. So there's gonna be two levels to it. You're gonna have the Jedi Masters, which are the guys that are making 100K or more per year, at least, and have been well-traveled, have a lot of experience, and know of different places that we can go to experience and find beautiful girls and be able to share amongst everyone and give advice to other people as well. And then we're also gonna have the young Jedis that maybe aren't as experienced or just starting out in life or are young and don't really have much money, but they wanna live this lifestyle. They're being inspired and they wanna start and learn and be able to communicate with each other. So that'll be the second level. And of course the Jedi Master level can will be in both so that you'll have the Jedi Masters also helping the young Jedis by answering questions uh, for people that are new and then the Jedi Masters, what we're gonna do is have like trips maybe once a year where all of us Jedi Masters come together and have go to a destination where we'll be able to experience all of this together and share and network and share financial advice, how to make money. It'll be how to make money, how to deal with breakups, how to meet girls, pretty much everything that you're seeing on my video, my videos that I'm teaching, we'll be able to network and do it in person and put, put together these groups and meetings for people and kind of be my, me as the connector, connecting all of you guys together. Cause I'm getting all these messages from people from all walks of life in different parts of the world. And a lot of you guys tell me that you don't have anyone to share these experiences with or share your stories and share all the knowledge that you've uh, accumulated throughout the years. And once you communicate with me, it's like you're spilling your entire story because you're so excited to tell someone finally because there's no one else you can take. You can't tell your friends, can't tell your family, and there's no one you can ask questions. There's no one you can uh, share these intimate details with. And so I wanna bring you guys together with other like-minded people that are watching my videos and kind of wanna live this lifestyle as well. And let me know which Jedi master uh, or Jedi part level in the inner circle that you wanna be in. There's gonna be either the young Jedi or the Jedi masters. And the Jedi masters is gonna be for you guys to join that's the, the screening process and then we got the young jedis for flux that way it's affordable and the is to screen out obviously if you're doing well there isn't much and then it keeps out the people that aren't serious it's kind of like the how to weed out the people that aren't really real and of course there's going to be moderation and there's going to be like con content moderation where i moderate who gets in and interview the people that want to come in to make sure they're real and that way everyone that's in the group is actually there because they want to be and that they share this similar outlook on life and want to live this type of life and level up even more, make more connections, make more friends, kind of like me and Tim, the 72 year old that you've been seeing interview and other people you haven't seen in my videos uh, that I hang out with. It'll be kind of like being into the inner circle and make, make these kind of bonds that will last a lifetime and these kind of memories that we can share together and have some awesome adventures together. You guys will be invited once you pay the entrance fee and then we'll get you in. All right, guys, that's it. Adios, pura vida. You say adios, baby. Adios. Uh, <laughs> bye. So, like, guys, if you uh, coming down here to Cancun, fly to Harmon, I have friends down here as well that can take care of stuff. If you're heading down to Costa Rica, I got friends in Costa Rica that can help take care of the stuff. You know, help uh, assist with transportation and activities and lodging and things like that. And then 
the business that helped me live this life is the credit card service business. So if you own a business and you're still paying the credit card fees, you don't have to do that anymore. Stop wasting your money. You could be enjoying it every month instead of like whatever you're paying to the bank, a thousand, two thousand to the bank every month. You could take it and go on a vacation. Look at the ocean, how beautiful it is down here. And the weather's perfect. It's so early in the morning, I'm already sweating. It's tropical and uh, people are swimming down there if you could see. And I, the only thing I wish that was down here is the that there was more waves. But like I said, if you own a business, uh, you don't have to pay for the fees. You can use it for vacation, take your family out, reinvest in your business, or whatever it is you want to do on with it. It's just it's way better than wasting it, paying it to the bank and getting nothing in return. So that's it. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you guys later. Adios.